Welcome back. I'm glad you're watching Morning Express. Time now for our State of the Nation discussion. And this morning, focus is on drugs. And, of course, we do have our question of the day where we are asking you, do you think the war on drugs has been politicized? And my colleague, Michael Gitonga, will be reading out some of your comments and questions on Twitter as well. Michael, do you have any comments for us so far? Yes, there are actually some comments that are coming in. Uh, Michelle, Stephen Mutange says, let them start by asking their addicted sons and daughters uh, if they sell them hard drugs? I guess that's a question directed to maybe those who are dr drug dealing. Mm -hmm. We all know the drugs cartels and in brackets their politicians, the government too, uh, time to act. <coughs> that's uh, from Sunk Baby. Uh, we've also got Emmanuel Veromi who says, yet yeah, it, it has been politicized and government uh, will say <coughs> the war is uh, coincidentally uh, being won right now. So remember, at this point in time, we'll allow you to participate uh, you can do that via Twitter. Later on, we'll open up the phone lines and you're welcome to interact with the panel that we have, which I'm going to hand over to Michelle now to introduce the panel and begin the discussion on the war of drugs in Kenya. All right, and let's get to it. In studio with us, we have a government spokesman, Eric Kiraide. Many thanks for joining us in studio. Yes, good morning. All right, and we also have security analyst, Mwenda Mbijiwe. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. And uh, later on, we'll be expecting uh, uh, Agostino Neto as well as Ndugu Ngidenji, who is the member of parliament for Tetu. They will be joining us in studio for this conversation. And uh, I'd like to begin with you, uh, Mr. Kiraide, and this is a question we're asking our viewers this morning. Do you think the war on drugs has been politicized? Well, it depends on how you look at the word politicization. In this country, we have a tendency of criminals looking for cover anywhere and everywhere. And, and this time round, from a very, you know, praiseworthy effort, to net the drug lords, I think some people who are jittery for reasons best known to them have tried to go for cover in politics. And these are the people who are crying very loudly that this is a political game. Because I don't know that um, Viagri, Vijay, whatever, is a, is a politician in this country. I know he's an Indian fugitive. I don't know whether Goswami, the, the other fellow, is a politician in this country, and I don't know which political party the two Akashas belong to. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and therefore, when the government, His Excellency the President, the Deputy President, the security agencies say we are going after the drug lords, if you read that is going after you, uh, the only thing I can say here, Michelle, is that uh, we don't really care as a government which political party you belong to. Mm -hmm. But wasn't we it said, want the uh, youth. Mr. Kiraide, yes. by Deputy President William Ruto, that top businessmen and top politicians from the coastal region are engaged in the war, I mean, in the drugs and narcotics trade? When, let me go back to the known. Mm -hmm. When you read the pullout on the property owned by the Akashas and where they are owned, that will tell you, I would say that they are not top businessmen, but to launder the money, they have done business. And I think it is very, very correct. For a long time, people have said there is no political will to do that. There is no political will to do that. And the deputy president was very categorical. It doesn't matter in which position you are in society. If you are involved in drugs, we shall net you, and we shall do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We'll be coming back to you. Um, Bijiwe, same question. Do you think this war has been politicized? <clears throat> well, in a long time, we've compromised our national security by letting drug or narcotics business continue mm -hmm. in our country and in the region. And if you look at some countries like Colombia, for example, the, the, the whole business of, narco of narcotics has infiltrated the political spectrum to the extent that at one point, even a presidential candidate was kidnapped by drug lords mm -hmm. and you know, made to vanish for a long time. Of course, that compromised the politics of that country. She has since you know, stopped her political you know, uh, a bid in the country. She's gone on exile in France. But yes, indeed, sometimes we allow politics to go a little bit too far. And this, for me, borders to national <coughs> security. So, Maybe you should ask me if the war on drugs is compromising our national security. Mm -hmm. As to whether it touches to politics, I would leave that to government itself and uh, 
you know, the key political players and government spokesperson like the, Mr. Kirai there said, I would leave that to them to analyze. But for me, I think the, the, the narcotics business is compromising national security. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we'll come back to the uh, issue of uh, national security. But let's speak to Mr. Kirai there uh, for a bit. Some of the comments and questions coming in on Twitter are alluding, uh, you know, Kenyans alluding to the fact that this is being politicized because for the last time we had uh, anything about drugs was five years ago during the election period. And now we're hearing it about it again uh, just a few months to the election. What has, been, what has been done by the government between 2013 and 2017? Len, the, the, this is something I find quite interesting. The system used to arrest the Akashas and leading to their extradition to the United States is a very long process. For you to infiltrate drug cartels, build confidence, even from a casual look, going by what the detectives have found appropriate to share with us, this is an operation which started long ago. Agents got into the cartel and the main people admit they were in that business. Incidentally, nobody admits they are in drug business, uh -huh. even if you catch them with their hands on it. They were able to order these drugs all the way from Afghanistan through Pakistan down to Mombasa, and they were caught with it in their hands. That is a slow, painstaking, very cautious process. It took that long. At the end of the day, because those people committing the offense knew that they were transporting this drug to the United States, knew that they were committing the offense against the people and the government of the United uh -huh. States, they were taken to court for extradition. I do not want to suggest why the courts decided that a matter which is usually, you know, there to, to, to look at what are the two governments willing to carry out the exercise, is there evidence they took so long. And at some point, a decision had to be taken because these suspects were becoming, even brazen now, shooting guns in public places and all that. At some point, a decision had to be taken. Mm -hmm. Because like uh, Mwenda here has said, we cannot continue compromising national security and I dare say national politics because of a few people who think they should harvest by making our children cabbages. Uh, and therefore, when people start talking about suddenly and, and, and people start only seeing the elections in August, I am insisting this is purely diversionary. Mm -hmm. This is purely diversionary. And uh, some of those people who have been talking loudest, you know, the police might, might, might not have the evidence to arrest you. But the public know who is the village thief. And, and I can tell you, as, as a young police officer, as a recruit, we, I was taught, if you want to know who are the thieves, just go and sit in a public place and they get a tout, someone to shout, the police are looking for thieves today. Those people who stand up fidget, those are automatically the thieves. So if you want to carry further investigations, start from there. Okay. Don't waste your time going right. very fast. So <laughs> those people in this country, we have seen corruption cases. Somebody goes to the tribe. Now, I think the tribe here is not applicable with the Pakistanis and Indians and all that. It, it, it becomes a bit hard to go to tribe. Mm -hmm. So they go to the political party. And, and I can tell the public without any shred of doubt, this one is the kind of, you know, you know deception we must say no as a country. Just no. All right. And yeah. before we move any further, let's listen in to what a section of leaders had to say on this war on drugs. We have the likes of uh, Mombasa Governor uh, Hassan Joho, Deputy President William Ruto, as well as Nairobi Senator Mike Mbuvisonko. Let's listen in. They have drug addicts in their homes. How much money kwa wa natumia mihadarati yawa? First of all, wasafisha yuko kwa wa ulize yawa, watoto wao, wananua hii mihadarati wapi? Na wale wanaozia hao ndio waanze kushika hao wasiacha kupiga mdomo tu hapa ya siasa. And I mean business by the way. Mambo ya kutishwa tishwa mimi sitaki. Mimi siwezi tishwa boss. 
all the officers here have been adequately briefed on what they need to do because this is one war against drugs and terror that we must win by all means. Tunataka wale watu wanauza miadarati, wale watu wametajwa, wate waende America. All right, and those are the views of a section of leaders on the war on drugs. And of course, this is our State of the Nation discussion here on Morning Express. Focus is on the war on drugs. But before we continue, let me take this opportunity to introduce Tatu Member of Parliament and Dungu Gedenji, who joins us in studio now. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, now, uh, like you've just seen, uh, views there of uh, Hassan Joho, Deputy President William Ruto, as well as uh, Nairobi Senator Mike Sonko on uh, the drug issue. And uh, Mombasa Governor Hassan and Joho seems to think that it's been very politicized and that they are targeting him in a political manner. What are your thoughts on that? Well, um, absolutely. I mean, the, the country has had um, a very difficult history with the, the drug menace and, um, and addicts and trafficking. And uh, it is a policy of this administration to ensure that Kenya is, is free uh, from the menace of drugs. Uh, Kenya can never be allowed to descend into becoming a narco state. That will never happen. Uh -huh. um, the, uh, the actions that you're seeing uh, by this administration is evidence of its conviction uh, to ensure Kenya is, is free of drugs and it becomes uh, you know, safe again for our children. Uh, and anybody who believes that this is political um, is completely misguided. Uh, I don't want to discuss personalities. Uh, investigations are ongoing. Um, but we've seen in many countries around the world, uh, even in Colombia, where narcotics became such a, a complex issue that it dragged in politicians, it dragged in the judiciary, and, and, and if that is allowed to happen in Kenya, it will effectively collapse all of our institutions and, and destroy this country's economy. Uh, and, and certainly this administration is not going to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing decisive action. You're seeing the destruction of, of vessels. Uh, you're seeing uh, arrest of suspects. Uh, you're seeing uh, even this most recent extradition. Um, so the, the government uh, and this administration is very keen uh, on making sure that uh, Kenya does not descend into the uh, abyss and become a narco state. Uh, I just wanted to add also that uh, in Parliament, indeed, when we were uh, vetting the um, uh, NIS uh, Director General, uh, one of the conditions that the, the Committee of Defense and Foreign Relations uh, made during that um, uh, process was to ensure that, you know, one, the two menaces of the time, which were uh, poaching and uh, drug trafficking, uh, of course, uh, as well as terrorism, uh, would be curbed uh, by the entry of the new DG. And, and I think he's been very effective uh, on all three fronts in, in securing our, our internal space um, and, and making sure that uh, you know, these people who would actually use the three uh, you know, spaces for, for, for you know, compromising national security mm -hmm. uh, would be clamped down on. And I think that has been very effective. All right. All right. And I like that you bring in the fact that the government will not let this uh, war uh, drag down politicians and drag in the judiciary as well. And let's bring in uh, Mwenda Mbijiwe, a security analyst. I mean, in the Daily Nation this morning, there's an article by Philip Murgor on how the judiciary is running cartels, uh, drug cartels rather, and, uh, you know, saying that the, the police are running sham investigations because top judiciary officials are also engaged in the war on drugs. And so we're seeing politicians being dragged in, the judiciary being dragged in with regard to security. What implication does this have? You see, <coughs> drug lords um, purely work for themselves. They set their own rules. They set their own uh, ground engagement rules, uh -huh. I mean, rules of engagement. And it's all about themselves. It's not about anybody else. And they will do anything to keep it that way. Uh -huh. So even if it's compromising the judiciary, compromising the police, and really, even in the police, they will not miss one or two people they can compromise. Uh -huh and they will go further to the judiciary. You saw the, the hard fight the Akashas mounted just before they were extradited, you know, trying to, to throw in legal handles. These people in their world, there is nothing like law, 
but when they come to the to the physical world, to our world where, which we know, they try to play by our, our laws. That's the same problem we have terrorists. Terrorists come, kill without, without laws, they don't respect life, and when we catch them and take them to court, they now begin to put legal handles along the way of fighting and these terrorists. And claim human rights. Uh -huh. and, and of course claiming human rights as though the people they killed have no human rights. Uh -huh. so, so what Murgo was saying is actually that the, 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 the drug lords have infiltrated the judiciary. And indeed, if we do not stop this, as, as the, the honorable member said, we are going to see a collapse of our institutions, the, 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 the legal institutions, the, the law institutions, even, you know, even our political institutions. Absolutely. You realize what, as he alluded, and which I, said to, uh, which I mentioned earlier, in Colombia, when the, the drug lords controlled the country, now they have lost the control. Mm -hmm. But when they controlled the country, they even decided who be elected. Mm -hmm. If they decided to mount a <coughs> candidate against the honorable member in Tetu, they, they fund the candidate, they make sure the candidate wins against the honorable member, mm -hmm. and they control the political space. So this is, this is a very serious matter. And, and, and I think th those talking, and truly, I have deep respect for Governor Joho. But I think he's crossing the line too fast mm -hmm. and too quickly. And I would ask him or anybody <coughs> else, why would you just be there and say you can't be intimidated? Look, if, this can, if the investigation lead to him or anybody else, I assure them this is going to take them down. And the going of the Akashas to the United States should tell every drug lord in this country that the game is over. Because I know what the, the Akashas will do. Mm -hmm. The United States have two ways of fighting this thing. They arrest you, they, they lock you up, they have a very tight law. But the other thing is they could actually negotiate. Say, look, we're going to give you everything you want to know, everyone you want to hear about, and then you grant us parole in this situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can assure every drug lord in the country, it's time to run, baby, run. All right, all right, that's very interesting. Let's bring in uh, Mr. Kirai there. When uh, Mombasa Governor Hassan Joho was speaking in Mombasa, he mentioned that, uh, you know, while saying that he will not be intimidated, he also mentioned that every security organ uh, reports to the president and the deputy, uh, saying that if they wanted to uh, ensure that drug barons and drug lords uh, do not carry out business in the country, that they could have done so. Does the buck stop with the president and the deputy? I think... The, the, it's, it's a back they have owned and executed with a lot of courage. And I am still a bit confused by these statements by Governor Joho, a very curious character because he doesn't seem to appreciate what Governor, I'm sorry to say so, but I think uh, I am saying what so many people can see out there. He doesn't seem to appreciate what being governor is all about. His Excellency the President has been following the progress on the war on drugs on a daily basis from the security agencies. He has gotten a brief and in demands. When you look at the changes in security setup, especially the police commanders, you notice that in the last three, four years, Mombasa has had the highest turnover. Mm -hmm. When you look at the activities which were done in the port, because when the drugs moved from the airport, the focus, they went down to the port. When you look at the activities in the port, the overhaul of management and all that, it tells you there is an executive who is in charge. When the deputy president went to Mombasa with an agenda to drum up support for voter registration, <coughs> he took time off to sit with the police commanders. You can see the people seated behind him. You can see the people he, he came out of a meeting with. He started by saying everybody will be arrested. It's like he was addressing them indirectly, telling them no excuse. He went on to admit that we know some of you have been compromised and we won't accept it. Uh, and therefore, the buck stops with him. When, when now the governor comes and owns that as being directed to Kutisha him. Who is Governor Joe to Kutisha, by the way? I don't understand this Sita T-shirt. Nobody has business T-shirting anybody around, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and, and what we must appreciate is that if somebody came and said, you know, if Gitonga shot up and said, I think we have a thief here. Uh, and the Honorable Moshimua said, are you calling me a thief? <laughs> <laughs> Does this require any further explanation? Does this require any further? And therefore, allusion to that, their sons know 
You know, going that deep, is there a fear that my son has told me you tried to sell drugs to him? Uh -huh. it, it leaves you so many questions unanswered. But once again, as the government spokesman, I am in no business of talking like this, but I will say something. In this country, we have 47 governors. Uh -huh. And they are, I think the majority are in opposition. Look at the decorum in Languma. Look at the decorum in Ongwai. Look at the decorum in um, Oparanya, op Oparanya the, 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 the Turkana governor. Look at Kidero. You cannot be running a tourist-centered town and then you start dressing and talking in a manner that makes people wonder whether they want to invest in those hotels. Mm -hmm. Because when I go for a tour, a trip for, for, for three weeks, for five days, it's an investment, whether you are in Europe or wherever. And therefore, we must be sensitive to the people we purport to lead. In as far as anybody and everybody, including Governor Joe, is saying, the government has the resources and the systems. I totally agree. And they are being used to the maximum. And if I want to quote the Deputy President, he is saying these resources are there. And this is one war those on the front line must win for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. And before we come to you, Gedenji, let's speak to um, Bejiwe for a moment. Do you think the government is using those resources uh, Credit is talking about to the maximum? If you look, uh, the last, let's say, five years, we've had tremendous change in our national security infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, the president came out, you know, he was not even one year in office when Westgate happened. Mm -hmm. And so many other terrorist attacks. Of course, it was going back to our incursion into Somalia in 2011. And then the president made this statement. He said, for two decades, our national security infrastructure has been failing because we've not invested in the men, the equipment, and the training of our security infrastructure and the, the players therein. That said, the president immediately put in measures to invest in our national security infrastructure. And it's paying off. Mm -hmm. For example, if you look at Nairobi, since Operation Usalama Watch that happened in the city, there has not been a single terrorist attack. The same is happening in the intelligence world. Mm -hmm. We have very thorough intelligence, in, intelligence agents, agents now operating out there. The law was changed. We allowed them to carry guns. We allowed them to carry handcuffs. And uh, an, an intelligence agent, agent now will arrest you if they find you committing an offense that, uh, uh, that, that warrants an arrest. Mm -hmm. And so we've, it, it's paying off. And, and look, when I hear people, to, when I saw the Akashas go, I said, this is it. We are there. Right. This is the country we dreamt about. We can't have our children every day being fed with drugs like food. And, and the drug lords are all over, you know, you know, bragging around. And look, if there is any drug baron that wanted to invest in, 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 in this country, you know, in their business, I can tell them this is the, the, the wrong place. This is the, and by the way, Magufuri has taken over. He's, mm -hmm. he's taken the queue. Absolutely. I and mean, I'm I, sure I you mentioned the region and other countries that this is happening. This is a global effort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Kenya, the, the politicians in Kenya should not sound like this is only a Kenya thing. They should check Magufuri. And Magufuri is a no-nonsense guy. Mm -hmm. He's going to do it even much more worse. And if, if the people supplying Magufuri in Kenya, I can assure you Magufuri will come for them in Kenya. Right. So it's, as I said, it's time to run. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, mean, Gedenji, bringing in what uh, you know, Bidu is saying about Magufuli, what he did in uh, Tanzania, now we've seen this week, uh, even drug users surrendering themselves to the police. Uh, there is a law that he brought out. He's had several drug barons uh, and uh, drug dealers arrested. So leaving the politics aside, is this a way uh, Kenya should go, perhaps, in fighting the war on drugs? Well, I mean, drug users are, are, are a victim. They're, they're, they're victims of this um, uh, nasty trade. Um, the way to, you know, uh, interdict this is to deal with the people who are supplying and trading. Mm -hmm. uh, the international uh, ring syndicates and rings which are moving the drugs. Uh, and I was very happy, like, like uh, Bidu had just said, when uh, the Akashas went, uh, we're always focusing on the, on the Akashas. There were two other individuals who also went. Nice. There was Goswami and, uh, and uh, this, uh, the Pakistani gentleman. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you read the, the indictment and, and, the, and the arrest warrant for, for the Pakistani especially, uh, he was known as one of the largest um, transporters 
of heroin in the world. I mean, this is a guy who was living happily in Mombasa, and then here we are, we are saying that, you know, someone is being targeted. This is the largest transporter of heroin in the world, and he's living in Mombasa, and he's fraternizing with, you know, people who are known in political circles. This is a very serious thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Um, so the way to interdict this is to deal with people like that, the traffickers, the movers, the transporters, the traders, uh, and the financiers. Once you deal with that area of the ring, uh, then we just help our poor victims who, are, who have been uh, you know, uh, sucked into that web uh, because they are now trapped you know, in, in, in this lifestyle that they cannot uh, escape from. So they're not really the ones to be punished. Um, but at the same time, you see in, in the Philippines, uh, uh, President Duterte has a no-nonsense approach and attitude to these people. Mm -hmm. like he said, these people are killing my people, and therefore they will be dealt with severely. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this is really the attitude that the, you know, people should take, because this is really a war. It is nothing short of that. These people are you know, heavily financed. They have a lot of firepower. They have weapons. They have, you know, they, they're really dangerous. And we saw the experience uh, that Colombia went through oh, yeah. with the Cali Cartel. Mm -hmm. The Cali Cartel was so powerful and, and, and so dangerous. Um, and if we allow, you know, uh, our country to be, you know, taken over by those types of elements, then we, we're gonna, we, we'll have, first of all, failed ourselves, failed our country, and, uh, and certainly we'll have a hard time getting rid of them. But I'm very happy. Um, as, as my brothers here have said, uh, that action of extraditing the Akashas and the, the two other gentlemen, uh, Vicky Goswami and, uh, and Hussein, was an important step. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, and, uh, step. Mr. Kirai, the, let's talk about the manner in which investigations when it comes to drugs are carried out, because many times the government's line is investigations are going on. But there have been several claims and allegations, especially from the coastal region, that uh, individuals suspected to be drug dealers are arrested, are incarcerated without uh, you know, due process. They're not being given what their charges are. There have been allegations of uh, you know, people disappearing when they were arrested on charges of drugs i mean what methods of investigations are being used by security apparatus let, let, let me tell you one thing is that um, a lot of drug dealers arrested in this country and convicted in belgium convicted in uk and other places the security agencies in this country just carry the docket investigated by the kenyan police and I can tell you that uh, I have had an experience at the airport here where you arrest a criminal with drugs in their stomach and, and they are extracted through a very natural and scientific process, <laughs> a case which requires zero evidence. Mm -hmm. When you go to court, it takes three years and because he's a Ghanaian, he's a Nigerian of course, and in this country, we have a beautiful constitution, which gives everybody the right to bail. After the first two appearances of the police, the fellow is bailed, you never see him again. As we are today, we have a wonderful chief justice. We have a chief justice who seems to be committed both ideologically and practically to set things right. His rank and file, right to the smallest magistrate, had better take this tip because for a long time our judiciary has been getting less and less relevant in our lives. Mm -hmm. In fact, if a, 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 a criminal is caught somewhere in Meru today in Kisi, in the streets of Nairobi, the temptation of the public is to deal with that person there and then, the instant injustice. Mm -hmm. The character where we have created a jurisprudence where every intention of the court at every minute is to release a criminal. And of course, in the police, having been there for a long time, we have not done much to improve our own image. So it's very easy to say the investigations were shoddy. Mm -hmm. Very hard. <coughs> and let me tell you, taking shoddy investigations to the court in the police is a disciplinary offense, a serious disciplinary offense. No policeman arrests someone in the street and takes them all the way to court without what we call prima facie evidence. And in cases of drugs, there is nothing like shoddy investigations. It is that 
when a court, I, 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 I would want to tell you that drug warlords have got very many strategies at very many levels. Mm -hmm. They use a lot of bribery at the ground level. As it goes up, they have a publicity campaign. They go out of their way to get political power. Mm -hmm. And of course, they try to form a perception. That is why some of these people are, <coughs> are relatively poor people when you think about the hierarchy of rich people you have in this country. But you see them telling off, you know, trying to create confrontation with the president. Of course, we know stories of El Chapo, Pablo Escobar. Mm -hmm. Not that Escobar has the, had the kind of money you can compare with someone like Warren, Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm or even Trump, before he went to politics, people didn't know Trump in Kenya, but they are very rich people. The wealth of the drug lords is exaggerated. Their political power is exaggerated. If they succeed to have a case go to full hearing, they will protect the kind of things Morgul is saying. Not that I agree with him, but they want to tell the presiding judge or magistrate Take your money, but your reputation will not have anything to be harmed. Mm -hmm. You start hearing murmurs of shoddy, inve you are shoddy investigations very early in the case, even before the case has, even before the prosecution has closed this case, <coughs> and it is being reflected in the media. I am not attacking the media here mm -hmm. or anything, but I can assure you that the prominence that side of the case gets that we are already dealing with a very badly investigated case here. That one is cushioning the judge so that when he makes a stupid judgment, mm -hmm. I, I mean, if somebody was caught with drugs and you are telling me stories, whatever judge, books you read, I caught him in the airport and they were in his stomach. So one of the, their, their strategy is to create a positive public image, image of rebellators, image of benevolence. Some of them do, you know, you have had even some known drug laws here talking about rehabilitation centers, yeah? <laughs> you sell me drugs, then you put me in a rehabilitation center. And, and, and I like what you uh, say, and, known and, drug laws. Uh, if uh, if uh, they're and, known, why is nothing being done uh, about uh, it? And therefore, investigations are a very difficult thing to come up with hard and fast evidence mm -hmm. in a certain environment. The bottom line is when a government comes with the kind of resolve we have seen in His Excellency the President, okay. in His Excellency the Deputy President, what I will ask the political class to do is come out and applaud that, support it. Even if we were to have another government tomorrow, I would expect it to carry on with the same pace. But the minute you start a chest thumping and saying, Uta Tishwa, I wish the evidence comes. All right. And, uh, you know, just before we continue, let's hear your comments uh, since yes. you brought it up on the claims by Philip Murgo that the judiciary, an arm of government, has been infiltrated by drug cartels. What I'll tell you is that the judiciary, like any other body, and I think as they have continued to reform themselves, they have admitted it. Mm -hmm. A few individuals in the judiciary are professional and greedy. So is the case with the police, so is the case with journalists, so is the, is, is the case with others out there mm -hmm. who refuse to carry out their civic responsibility of giving out and giving evidence against criminals. But I would not accept to any black, uh, blanket condemnation of judiciary, especially as a time we are seeing a lot of sincerity in the Chief Justice, a lot of sincerity in the Supreme Court. These are the people who set the standards. Mm -hmm. We really have some people of quality there in the courts of appeal. And at a time we have seen the whole country shifting and saying that we are refusing this. When you look at all the way from Duterte to, 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 to Magufuri, to Kenya here, to the US, when you look at all that effort, if you are in the judiciary there, and you have been enjoying this money, the, the best you can do is just stop it. Because we have systems, we are investigating, we are carrying surveillance on these people, and you'll be ashamed. 
So nobody should feel that they are secure enough. And, and there will be no place to hide, not in politics, not in tribes. There, there will be no place to hide. And, and the government is focused. But we've heard this from the government very, uh, very, very many times. That but we're but investigating, it is bearing Investigations are Akashas going on. have been we'll working <clears throat> on the heads of Kenyans for the last how many years? Decades. Yeah. For, for, for decades. Uh -huh. For decades. Damn, they have just... been working around for decades. I mean, all these governments have come. And I am telling you, I've served <coughs> quite a few administrations now. And I can say this administration has been able for the first time to touch the call. All right. And, and uh, what just, we just as the employees... Yes. I mean, do, do, do you agree with that? I mean, um, it's been widely publicized that, um, you know, during the extradition, you know, process, uh, the, the Akashas were trying to compromise the judiciary. I think it's been even in the media mm -hmm. that a bribe of four million shillings was being paid to some judiciary officials to uh, stall the process. Um, so it is clear that not the judiciary as an institution, but elements in the, in the judiciary um, had been targeted to be compromised so that they can frustrate the justice. <coughs> I'll give an, another example. Uh, August 2014, when that vessel was found uh, with the drugs on board in, mm -hmm. in Kenyan waters, uh, and the president said it's going to be destroyed. Uh, there was a, a, a hue and cry. I mean, how, people were actually uh, bringing injunctions from court to stop the destruction of the vessel. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the question, obvious question is, okay, who is the client? Who is the owner? Come, show, present yourself, uh, come forward, and make your case. There was nobody coming forward. Mm -hmm. But who was filing this injunction in court? There must be somebody. There must be a client giving instructions. So, you can see that um, uh, even within the judiciary, there are elements which are allowing themselves to be used negatively uh, to frustrate uh, a positive process. So um, uh, I was very happy that uh, you know, the destruction went ahead as mm -hmm. planned uh, because uh, that, that, that was um, people's uh, you know, uh, drug uh, uh, dreams going up <laughs> in smoke. <laughs> All right. And, uh, you, uh, and you can see, if, if I can add, interject a little, mm -hmm. you can see from these actions the kind of international appreciation we have gotten. The Pope, the President of the US. The, these people don't go to places where drug is being tolerated. You, you, when, when Kenya harvests that kind of goodwill from the international community, indeed, when they uh, harvest that, that government requires to be applauded whether you support the individuals there or not. Mm -hmm. All right. Indeed. All right. Yeah. Let's hear from Biju, uh, especially with regard to security, because even as we speak on the war on drugs in Kenya, Mombasa is used as a transit hub uh, to transport drugs to other parts of the continent. And, you know, we've mentioned that security apparatus has been beefed up, as uh, so security infrastructure has been improved as well. But why is, still, is this still going on? You see, um, like the honorable member alluded to earlier, um, Previously, uh, drug lords used airports as transit points for drugs. Mm -hmm. But with the tightening of security, screening, and you know, all the modern uh, uh, security systems put in place, seaways have now become the new ways of transporting drugs around the world. Mm -hmm. And you remember even the, greatest, the largest howl of cocaine ever found in Africa was, was found in Mombasa mm -hmm. some years back. And we know the whole saga about it. It was brought here and banned, you know. But um, of course, there are, there, are, there are propaganda stories that no, we didn't ban it. We banned Wunga, and the real thing went away. Right. So I leave that to I leave that to <laughs> propaganda we'll be theories. To yeah, I, about I leave that. that to propaganda theories. <laughs> but <laughs> what I know is we banned something, mm -hmm. and it's my belief that we banned the right thing. However, so seaways have become the new thing, and Mombasa, you know, being one of the key ports around the world. Uh, has become, you know, and again, it, it, if you look at the, the, the central location of Mombasa, it seems to connect the whole world. You know, you come from, you can come from Southern America, where most of these drugs come from, mm -hmm. around the, the Cape of Good Hope, and into Mombasa, and from Mombasa you can spread around the world to India, to Europe, and everywhere. So we need to tighten our, our port security. And uh, even uh, you had the deputy president, the clip that you played also, connect that to terrorism. Mm -hmm. Mombasa has also been, you know, at the, at the heart of terror attacks. 
uh, though that has tremendously improved. Of course, the governor, you know, also alluded to that in his, uh, you know, fiery uh, press brief, which I don't think needed to happen mm -hmm. really in the first place. So anyway, uh, uh, um, the point is Mombasa has become that, that you know, central uh, point where convergence of world forces, whether good and bad forces are, you know, uh, they are converging. And I think it's place it's the place where government also has to deploy its best. That's why Marwa is there. You know, they don't like Marwa, but I think of <coughs> our public administrators, it's Marwa deserves a medal. Mm -hmm. And I recommend Kidenji, before you leave office, please, sir, uh, <laughs> give him a medal. Soon. Give him another medal <laughs> on top of what he has. I think the man has been, you know, at the front of it. I think Governor Joho, with a weaker public administrator, would have destroyed him. But I think the guy matches the Joho guy that. I think it's a perfect match. Mm -hmm. Perfect mm -hmm. match. Uh, I mean, let, let, so? let me just jump in on, mm -hmm. uh, on you know, what Mombasa has turned out to be in terms of um, a center point for uh, the trade. Uh, and, and this is not speculation. This is fact. Um, Bijou has said the largest drug hole in Africa was found in Mombasa. The last two shipments that came in uh, under this administration's watch came into Mombasa. Um, the... Akasha family uh, network in Mombasa. And there's a, a very clear confluence between, as Biju says, terrorism, drug smuggling, and even um, poaching mm -hmm. and, and ivory trafficking. There's actually, they actually converged. And, and you find that you know, even the, the, the big uh, you know, um, ivory smuggler, uh, who is now uh, in court, also in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you're seeing there's a nexus between the three, and, and uh, it, it is really a credit uh, to the Kenyan security forces, the National Intelligence Service, and indeed even the KDF, uh, because there was a KDF, you remember, that interdicted this vessel uh, in the Indian Ocean. So uh, the tightening of that security space is allowing us to, to have you know, massive wins uh, in, in, in the drug, drug uh, in the fight against drugs, also the fight against terror, and also the fight against uh, poaching and, and ivory trafficking and smuggling. Um, the, I just, I, I, my mind is boggled um, that any politician, you know, would come and stand on a public podium and start being defensive about something that the nation is celebrating as a victory mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in securitizing our, our, our country <coughs> and protecting our children. How can you be defensive about that? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, Eric was saying it. I mean, if someone is pointing, shouting thief, you know, the people who stand up and say, I'm not a thief, then you always start wondering, or is it a case of the know. guilty are afraid? Sure. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, and just to add a quick one, uh, in November this year, I was invited, you know, in a high military delegation to Bogota, Colombia, mm -hmm. where we went through the peace process, the whole issue about dealing with, uh, you know, narcotics and how the government has stabilized. And one of the things that came out very, very clearly in our trip was that the, the narcotics business went down when the government strengthened its police and military strength. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, Colombia has the same population with us, but their military is 10 times larger than our military. They have a military going to 300,000 today highly professional. We went to their training bases in uh, Tolemaida and other places in Bogota. And I'm telling you, and, and I looked at that with great admiration. I'm glad to meet uh, uh, Honorable Gedenji. I'll share this with him when we leave here. I think it's time we strengthen our, our military, our police forces. In Bogota, the police is very powerful. And when, 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 the, when the bad boys <coughs> know that there's someone behind them, then they stop these, these, these drugs. You can't believe the country of, uh, of uh, what did you call that guy? Carlos the Jaco. Mm -hmm. No, the Carlos the Jaco. There was a famous drug. Pa Pablo, Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar. The I Cali even Cartel. asked the Minister of Defense uh, that uh, they said they found uh, you know, a, a large container with uh, dollars in, in some farm. Mm -hmm. I asked the Minister of Defense, where is it? I need some dollars. They <laughs> joked, he joked about it. But the thing is, the way Colombia has been able to move forward, I think we'll be employing that. I'm, I'm glad to have been part of it. I've written a paper for government on the same. And I think the future for our country, I can tell you we will not have this country become a drug conduit. Right. That's for sure. All right, Absolutely. So what then, what, what then is the way forward, uh, especially with the government's plans on the, this? The way forward is, is very simple. 
you will recall, and I'm not unduly taking credit to that, uh, the turnaround at the airport came around when I was the general manager for safety and security. Mm -hmm. Take credit, take credit. Take credit. Yes, you yeah. know, yeah. If, if it was your work, you That's would take it. That's welcome. <laughs> and, and how did we win? I got the full support from the management of KA, you know, the MD of KA, and from the government in terms of equipments, training, administrative reforms, and the motivation of officers who perform and remain on the street and narrow path. Mm -hmm. Because the greatest frustra uh, frustration I have seen as an inspector, as a superintendent of police, as a senior officer, is when an officer interdicting drugs, preparing a case file, is given 10 million shillings. You know how much money that is to a police officer, or to every Kenyan for that matter. Sure. He refuses the money <coughs> and says, I have a country to serve. Not because you'll be caught, not because anybody is watching. Then, when finally the case goes to court, there is a student magistrate seated there, dressing him down with some legalese. We need also this effort to be complemented very seriously within the judiciary. This equally applies to cases of terror. Don't re terrorist suspects are mainly avoid or their intention is to have maximum casualties. When you drag this case for three, four years and then start talking about technicalities, you are not helping humanity. Uh, and therefore, the push in the police, the push within the government, the push within the agencies is bearing fruit. Of course, there is much more to do in Mombasa because how did the port get converted so fast? Mm -hmm. It means there were so many checks and balances which were not in place. But the job being done by the National Intelligence Service, the job being done by the Inspector General of Police with its various arms, the jobs being done by the coordination of national government, Marwa, is very, very commendable. All right. We give it a push, we give it a support, and then we need that sensitivity from every aspect of the government. Don't listen. How did a Kenyan court purport to be listening to an extradition case of Hussein who is a Pakistani, when its own government is not even interested in him? <laughs> Vijay, you know. People who are in Kenya illegally. Let, let, let us not uh, read law books from backwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just because you are called learned, it doesn't mean you, you must sit there deceiving everybody all the time. <coughs> but I have appreciated and I do appreciate again, we have achieved justice and a, a, a Supreme Court we can rely on. We have a Judicial Service Commission we can rely on. And the way forward is also to keep these people under surveillance. Mm -hmm. Everybody with a responsibility. Any human being with freedom to do things will do them, especially when they include getting big money. Instantly. Instantly, Instantly. absolutely. All right. So, so I, I think the way forward, the government should just tread the peace it is going. And all of us who are serving the government should step up. Especially every police officer, let nobody imagine he is too small or too big to play their part. All right, Biju, a final comment. A quick one. Um, in Meru, <coughs> one of the local NGOs, realizing how we were having a lot of, uh, you know, uh, rape problems, mm -hmm. rape case problems, uh, you know, real rape cases and offenders setting, being set free, created a forum where the, the lawyers, the police, and the magistrates could even do a breakfast to synergize their, and their efforts. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it's time uh, Honorable Gedenji and the Committee for National Defense, both in the Parliament and the Senate, begin a synergy kind of consortium where we bring in the police, the, milit the, 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 the intelligence officers, the police, I mean the, the, the magistrates, so we can create synergy and begin to realize this is our country. I mean, right. you're not a judge there to refute what the, the intelligence officer or the officer at the airport did. And doing. so uh -huh. you should believe his eyes saw somebody's 
stomach remove drugs. Uh -huh. So you should convict that guy on that evidence. You All can't right. say, I'm a judge, I'm not convinced. <laughs> a very heated conversation going on here. We're speaking to government spokesman Eric Kirai, the Tetu member of parliament, uh, Ndungu Gidenji, as well as a security analyst, um, Wendan Bijiwe. And uh, let's bring in Michael Gitonga. And I remember our conversation this morning is on drugs. And we were asking you, do you think the war on drugs has been politicized? I understand your comments and uh, views have been coming in on Twitter, Michael. A lot of you yes, I'll just that. sample a few of what has been coming in. And uh, we have Abdi Khalif asking a question. Why is the fight on drugs only in the coastal region and not the whole country? I guess that was answered in one way or the other. But because of time, we can't come back to the panel. Our leadership is like a parent who has lost control over a child. And neighbors are helping out. Uh, we also have Greg who says the government is finally doing something. Why can't we be thankful? Last comment I'll read, although there is more. Uh, Sam Okeo says, this is a war on the opposition, not on drugs. <laughs> well, right. there you go. <laughs> Those are some of the comments that have come through so far. But uh, because of time, we'll have to wind up, uh, 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 you know, this segment of the show right about there. But do stay with us right here on KTA News. We've got some news updates coming up. Then later on, we also have Tech Central, where we'll be looking at a new app that does some amazing things.